Once upon a time, the station of a critic or a journalist was somewhat respectable, but now it seems to have devolved into one occupied by the most impotent, inept, counterproductive, pretentious, snobbish of douchebags. I once believed this to be a recent development, but the truth is the two have always attracted a certain kind of narcissist, a hipster shitbag or two struggling to remain a few notches ahead of the cool curve, to paraphrase Razor Fist, but the sort were more of a minority among journalists and critics at one point in time. Now, probably not even a minority, probably a minority of a minority for all I know. But as of late, it feels like being a prick more preoccupied with stroking your own ego and sense of importance is more important than doing your damn job. And it feels like it's become a norm. Like a very asinine norm at that. Then again, perhaps I'm asking too much of these mental midgets expecting objectivity from a bunch of pseudo-mavens and pseudo-intellectuals with delusions of grandeur. I won't mince words here. A lot of this is fueled by acrimony, but if, if, this, if this comes off as a bit of pettiness to you, that's probably because it is. Because pettiness tends to be the source of my power usually half the damn time. Seriously, for generations, since at least the advent of journalism, and or really since the dawn of when critics first emerged from the ocean or whatever cave they crawled out of, and people for some reason decided to pretend they had some legitimacy or right to be given respect, we critics and journalists have always, they served a purpose at one point. To inform the public on why something is good or bad, or or just to give the merits of why something is bad and the merits of why something is good. But it was supposed to be logical, cre- constructive, and re- reasonable, and objective. I would like it's what I like to think was once the norm back in the day, but now it seems like they don't even do that. Like. If they have even the slightest bent against something, if it does not conform to their ideological bullshit, they, I don't know, they dogpile, they seek to destroy something like it's Sodom and fucking Gomorrah. And for examples of this, I often look to movies for examples of this, actually. Like Dirty Harry was called by douchebags like Robert Edgar Ebert, uh, a fascist movie. Which is bullshit. Like, this is why I agree with um, John Mills when he called him and that other bitch who called it a fascist. When he called them actual fascists, I think that's a pretty fair assessment. Because these people usually don't offer good constructive criticism. At least not in, in certain regards. When it comes to horror or certain types of movies that are supposed to entertain people, they... I don't know. It's like their, their lizard brain can't p- properly function. And... To give you other examples, look at how they treated, what's a good example? The Thing. They say it was just a gross-out fest to dare your friends to, like, I remember this one douchebag for a star log. What, his review was the most petty, impotent rant. Like, it came off as a hipster douchebag who thinks they're funny. So basically, it's like an, it was basically like an article written by Red Letter Media. Um, and it was just petty. It was not, cons- it did not say why the thing was bad. It just said it was bad and that was it. Like, this is why I don't think critics should be taken seriously because they're just opinionated pricks. And to quote Dirty Harry, opinions are like assholes. Everyone's got them. So critics, in my mind, they should not be, uh, if they're paid, they should not be paid if, because anyone can do what they do, especially with the advent of the internet. So they are like, and we've seen their jo- their job market decline, which I'm happy for, because, well, they're scum. They've be- they've always been scum on a certain level, but they have gradually become preoccupied by more scum than usual, and they are not motivated by at least I don't think that I do not believe they are motivated for to be beneficial to the public. I believe they are doing this so they can be remembered, so they can. Be say oh, we're the kingmakers of what's popular. Well, newsflash, dipshits, you're not. You're a laughing stock. 
how I make fun of half of you, like Den of Geeks, Red Letter Media. I make fun of all of you because you were scum who should have never been taken seriously, especially Red Letter Media. They are the scummiest. Disc- like, they said, I, whoever the douchebag is that did Mr. Plankett, he said, J.J. Abrams or Jar Jar Abrams, as we know on the internet, should, should have directed the prequels and George Lucas should have directed people to their seats. Yeah, that age like fine wine, didn't it, dipshits? So, yeah, critics are useless. They are pointless. Like, for other examples, look at um, the 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 um, criticism of Rising of a Shield Hero when it first came out. Or Goblin Slayer. Like, when Shield Hero came out, someone said, one reviewer basically said his reign was burn it and salt the earth. And I've read the review of it by Anime News Network. It was some of the most asinine backwater thing. And the most annoying thing for me was he said it was problematic because of when it was coming out. I'm like, motherfucker. The times when a movie sh- or a TV show or whatever comes out should not affect how it does. And this comes from Japan. They don't. And their argument was because of the whole Pound Me Too movement. Um, that it was, or and bear in mind, it was also around the time Vic Mignano was being thrown into the bus like Eric Cartman. So, yeah, they were saying it was a bad time for these reasons. But this came from Japan. They have they don't have the same problems as we do, thankfully, or not yet. Anyway, give it a few years; those SJW cancer cells will find their way there eventually. But my point is, critics have always been useless. And they have never once been in danger of being productive. At least the, at least now they have never been. Because the thing about Chris back in like Roger Ebert, I do not like the guy. I think he is scum of the earth. I hope he rots in hell, or at least part of me does. But at least he wasn't a complete douchebag 100% of the time. I can say this about him positively. There were times when he was actually able to get his head out of his ass and be productive in reviewing something. Hell, Siskel was worse. Siskel was more of a douchebag. And him, I full heartedly hope rots in hell. Actually, no, no, that'd be unfair to the people in hell. I'm hoping he ends up in purgatory. Uh, that's more of a fan of him. But yes, once upon a time, these critics, for all their problems and faults, they at least served a purpose. Now, they do not. They are a bit like the FBI. At one point, they served a function and even did it well, but now they are long overdue for disillusion and to be shown the fucking door. So yeah, don't listen to critics. They are scum, always have been scum on some level, and it's high past time they were made to know where their place was. Because they now shame you if you do something they don't like. Like, even, as far as I know, Ebert didn't do that. Siskel didn't do that. Like, they were snobs, but they at least could remember you had the, it was you who chose where you give your money. These other critics today and journalists, they do not. So, yeah, that's my thought overall on the subject is just, fuck critics. They can go to hell. They can go to hell and die. And, um, I'll end it there. Have a nice day.